Wulara Wari Benelong was born around 1764 in Wongal country on the southern side of the Parramatta River. The Wongal occupied the meandering mangrove-lined estuary, stretching from Parramatta to Darling Harbour, which supported an abundance of animal and bird life, fish and oysters. Benelong and his Wongal kin hunted and collected these rich food resources using spear, shell hook and trap. They glided across the waters of the surrounding Parramatta River in their sleek bark canoes, or Nawi, to fish, hunt and travel. In general, the canoe is assigned to her, into which she puts the fire and pushes off into deep water to fish with hook and line, this being the province of the women. If she have a child at the breast, she takes it with her, and thus, in her skiff, a piece of bark tied at both ends with vines and the edge of it just above the water. She pushes out regardless of the elements, if they be but commonly agitated. The Wongal were one of a number of separate coastal groups occupying the Sydney region between Botany Bay, Pitwater and Parramatta, who shared a common language and culture, were united through ties of kinship and participated in various inter-clan events ceremonies and rituals. Collectively, the related groups along the Parramatta River and Port Jackson call themselves Eora or Eura, meaning people. Other Eora groups included the Gadigal, Gamaragal, Wallamudigal and Baramudigal. Each of these bands contained some 200 to 300 people, comprised of extended family groups, so there were traditionally around 1,500 Eora residing across the Sydney area, according to Governor Phillips' estimate. By the time the first fleet of British settlers arrived in 1788, the 24-year-old Benelong was an initiated Wongal warrior in the prime of his life, was married and played an active role in the social and ceremonial life of his people. He was ambitious too, and this budding leader set about extending his influence and status amongst the Eora by brokering politically favourable marriages for himself and his sisters. But the course of Benelong's young life amongst the Wongal was about to take a dramatic twist and change forever.